Thanks for staying with us. We're turning attention now to Africa. We we'll begin in Tunisia, where President Kai Saied has won a second term in the presidential election. The head of the Independent High Authority for Elections, Farouk Waksa, announced that Kai Saied won 90.7% of the votes. The electoral body mentioned that a vote, uh, voter turnout was recorded at 28.8%, with more than 2.8 million votes cast from the 9.8 million eligible voters. Opposition parties chose to boycott the election, labeling it a farce amid Tunisia's worsening uh, political situation and increasing authoritarianism. Over the weekend, the atmosphere in Tunisia showed little indication of an election, aside from an anti-side protest on Friday and celebrations in the capital on Sunday night. Critics of the president have threatened to continue the opposition to his government. Let's bring in um, the publisher Inside Watch Africa, Shea Adeyemo. Adeyemo. He joins me to discuss the prospects of um, Tunisia's economy as President Said is re-elected, and not just the economy, the politics of Tunisia as a whole. Um, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me, Precious. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. So when you take into account um, events leading up to this election, what do you make of the outcome? Um, again, as an African, we are sort of running in a cycle. Uh, 13 years ago, specifically in 2011, uh, there was what we call the Arab Spring. And the question, you know, we all have continued to ask ourselves is why that happened? Why was there so much trouble? And um, in my opinion, that's what we're still dealing with now. But unfortunately, instead of all of us to learn lessons from the things that was done, uh, economy was badly run, um, was perceived that leaders were running, um, you know, the country as the personal estate. Mm. Again, that is what we're having because, you know, you have an election where uh, the opposition are being calmed down, uh, they're being arrested and being jailed, and the few ones who um, sort of join um, as opposition in the election are not given the opportunity to really, really express themselves. Um, fortunately, the economy is not doing well. I mean, if it were doing well, maybe the people would take their eyes away from the, politi uh, the politicians and the political. Maybe they'll probably be thankful that they have an economy that is growing. But unfortunately, the economy is not growing. The economy is not doing well. And uh, the prospect of having um, leaders or people who they truly want to be their leaders uh, be chosen or be voted for by them is not there. And again, we're running a cycle. And I will not be surprised if there's another Arab Spring that will happen not in the, um, you know, in the nearest future. Mm. And interesting, you mentioned um, the Arab Spring because Tunisia is the birthplace of that Arab Spring. And then uh, perhaps the only relative success story of that uprising, it, it then also surprised the world by transitioning into a democracy. But is Tunisia, when you look at all the, the conditions around this election, um, is Tunisia still on the path of, of democracy? Obviously not. You see, the truth of the matter is, and I think I should seize this opportunity to say, when we talk about um, democracy, it's, it's, it's a system of government. And the only way you can have government or proper governance in any society, whether it's a small local government, state government, or you know federal government, is when you put your best foot forward. When the best brain, those who truly understand and have been trained over the years to understand what it takes to govern the people, when you have those people governing the people, it is only that time that you can say you have democracy. So whether it is um, autocracy, whether it's democracy, whatever government, whatever people you have in place governing your people or governing the people, it must be your very best. And we all can testify to the fact that in Africa, those who are governing us now, and I and I say that without any any any, any cause of regret, and across Africa right now, we don't seem to have our very best ruling us because at the end of the day, they're not doing the job understanding what it means to govern the people so that everyone in their society can benefit from what it means to govern them. Mm. Um, he, he has made his first comment, that's President Syed, and he told State Television that, I just want to quote him, 
um, that this is a continuation of the revolution. Uh, we will build and we cleanse the country of the corrupt traitors and conspirators. Uh, and one wonders if it's also now part of that corrupt traitors and conspirators. And then the, what you make of political stability in that country. It's not enough to say something and do another thing. And I, 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 I want to appeal to our political leaders. You see, the, the idea of thinking you would continue to cow people, arrest people, up down on them is gradually waning out. You have a situation where the younger people are more daring. There are people who are not going to take kind of use or absorb kind of things our generation upward absorb. And so I want to plead with them that in the way they deal and the way they do or carry out their business, we need to take that into cognizance. That generation now are not likely to control some of the things that we control in our time. And so it is time to start to really, really do the business of government. It's really not difficult. Just make sure you get testing in place and ensure that everybody, because it's actually Commonwealth, benefit from the Commonwealth and everyone's life is upgraded from what it was before so that all the necessary things are done so that lives can be better. Look, truth is, you cannot just say, oh, I am providing or is a revolution. That's not enough. The point is what is happening since he's been in government, before he also now won this re-election, what did he do? How has he conducted himself? This is out there in the public gear for everyone to see. And so um, for me, it's laughable when our leaders come and say something and everybody sees a different thing. I think that time is, is waning out and... Everybody must be aware of that. Mm. Um, the, one of the very interesting detail to put out there is the fact that this election cannot be, cannot be uh, challenged because the Supreme Court was dissolved, um, I think that was 2020, 2020, 2023, I think. And then the administrative court, which is not supposed to look um, into election matters, has also been, that, that power has been stripped of it. When you look at all of these developments in that country um, with those who challenge him also been thrown in prison. And then you look at the Northern African region. What does political stability or otherwise um, in Tunisia mean for the Northern African region? Again, like you said earlier, they are like the whole, you know, like I vote a country where all the rest of the Northern countries are sort of rally around. And it is definitely unfortunate that them are supposed to be leaving the park and not doing a good job. And, um, you know, so look at what you have just enumerated, including arresting um, uh, opposition parties. And, and how can you claim that is, that, that, that is democracy? So when, when they come out and say some, you know, the things they say, you just laugh because, I don't know, it, it sort of bothers on the fact that maybe the rest of us, very stupid people, um, you know, we don't really know what is right or what is wrong. And whatever they tell us, we must just stay. And um, whatever they say is the right thing, you know, so the right thing really is not the right thing. What they say is the right thing. So I, I think those things are very dangerous, dangerous development. And I'm hoping as an African who believe that, in my opinion, Africa is probably the best continent in the world. Um, I, I'm hoping that we'll start to get leaders who truly understand what governance is and will start to do the right thing going forward so that we'll not continue to have deplorable situation that we have continued to deal with for several years on our lovely continent. Publisher Inside Watch Africa, Shea Adeyem, always a pleasure to have you, know, have you on. Thank you for your time and analysis. Thank you so much for having me.